My name is Jonathan Goforth, and today we're going to talk about vocabulary words to help you pass the real estate exam. So this is going to be part one of a few different vocabulary videos. I'm going to try to keep them pretty short because I like shorter videos so you can take a break in between them. But as this video starts winding down at the end, click on the description of this video. I'm going to put a whole bunch of links to test questions, all kinds of national questions and state questions and everything to help you pass this exam. Um, uh, some math questions and all kinds of things are in there to help you. So before this video is over, make sure you click on the description. Uh, I've been a full-time realtor for 25 years and the past three years, I've got to be listed in Forbes magazine as one of the top market leaders in the country. So that's a huge honor for me. And so let's jump right in. Let's do these vocabulary words. So this very first, this first screen, we're going to talk about three words. I have uh, put these in, in groups to help it be as easy as possible on you to memorize them and to remember them with depending on what kind of questions you get. Um, accretion is the gradual buildup of land. Think of accretion like addition. Accretion is the gradual buildup of land. Erosion is the opposite of accretion. Erosion is the gradual wearing away of land. So let's talk about these two words first. What they have in common is they're both gradual. They are a slow process. You need to remember these are gradual, but they're opposite. So let's picture the Mississippi River. And upriver, you have the river coming down, and it's slowly eroding away. It's picking up dirt, and it's bringing the dirt all the way down to the bottom. And where the Mississippi dumps into the Gulf of Mexico, you see it causing accretion. It's addition, and it's depositing that silt and creating the delta, which slowly, gradually gets bigger and bigger due to accretion. Now, the third word on there, avulsion. Avulsion is the sudden removal of land. It's violent. An example would be a hurricane washes away the hillside along the beach, suddenly removing the land. And on TV, we see huge beach homes in California sliding off the cliffs because the hurricane has rapidly removed the dirt out from under their foundations. Or a dam breaks and that water comes rushing down really fast and it causes avulsion. That's the difference between erosion and avulsion. They're both taking away land. Erosion is gradual. Avulsion is a sudden removal. That's the one thing to remember about avulsion sudden removal of land. Let's talk about a cloud on the title. And I'll tell you, a lot of the vocabulary words that you're memorizing, you're trying to learn them as fast as you can. Uh, many of them, you're never going to use them <laughs> in your real estate career. You're just not going to use a lot of these terms in day-to-day -day real estate. But this one, you will. A cloud on the title, you're going to you're going to hear that phrase from your title company. Say it's your listing, you've got it under contract, they pulled title work, and you get a call from the title company, hey, we've got three clouds on the title. we got to get this mess cleaned up so we can close. So a cloud on the title is any claim that impairs a title. A cloud on the title is any encumbrance that puts a title to real property into question. Examples of encumbrances are foreclosure proceedings, uh, liens on a property, like the mortgage. Maybe it's in probate. Uh, there could be unpaid bills filed against the house. Clouds on the title are resolved through a quit claim deed. So right there, 
That is what a cloud on the title is. Again, at the very top of there, it's any claim that impairs a title. But in our answer, we've got two really good vocabulary words. So while we're talking about this, let's do those. Let's talk about an encumbrance. An encumbrance is something that burdens or limits the title, or it limits the rights held by someone else. For example, a property tax lien for non-payment of real estate taxes. And this would be the number one priority for repayment. So let's stop right there because that is a very good test question. Let's talk about what, what that is, why I put that on here. Let's say a house um, has a whole bunch of different kinds of liens against it, a whole bunch of encumbrances. Uh, in fact, let's just keep reading right there. It could be a mortgage lien, mechanics liens, which are for contractors who make improvements uh, but were not paid. Could be income tax liens, judgment liens, could be easements. An encumbrance is a claim against a property by a party that's not the owner. It can impact the transferability of the property and restrict its free use until the encumbrance is lifted. So let's go back up. Let's start again at the top. Encumbrance. An encumbrance is something that burdens or limits the title, or it limits the rights held by someone else. For example, a property tax lien. That is for non-payment of real estate taxes. Now right there in the middle, this would be the number one priority for repayments. Let's talk about that. Let's say this house has a whole bunch of encumbrances. So a whole bunch of those things, a variety of different liens, judgments are against this house. The very first thing that will be paid right there will be a property tax lien. So if they have not paid real estate taxes and now there's a property tax lien on that house, it will be paid before any other judgment on there. It will be paid before the mortgage gets paid. It'll be paid before any contractors who have any kind of judgments on there. The government's gonna get their money first. And so anytime you see a property tax lien question like that, it gets paid first. It's the number one priority for repayment. That right there, will help you get one right on your exam. You're probably gonna see a question similar to that. A quit claim deed. This is something you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with, for sure, for the real estate exam, and also for your real estate career. The most common use is to quiet a cloud on a title. And that was our second question. We talked about clouds on the title. Well, the most common use of a quit claim deed is to quiet a cloud on a title. A quit claim deed makes no assurance that the grantor actually has any ownership interest in a property. It merely states that if the grantor does have an interest, they release those ownership rights. So basically, if I own it and I'm not saying I do, I give you my interest. And that's what a quit claim deed does. Actual fraud. Actual fraud is lying. Actual fraud is an intentional misrepresentation of a fact. An example would be to cover up obvious foundation cracks with newly finished sheetrock against those basement walls to hide them and then intentionally not disclose the cracks and foundation problems when filling out the seller's disclosure form. That is actual fraud. It's the worst form of fraud, and it's just intentional misrepresentation of a fact. This one, I want you to screenshot it. I want you to memorize it. 
after the video's over, save it in your phone and come back and memorize what this is. This is one of those that I, I, I bet it's going to be on your exam in one form or another. The Federal National Mortgage Association, abbreviated FNMA, which we call Fannie Mae. That is Fannie Mae right there. So anytime you ever hear the word Fannie Mae, that's what it stands for. The Federal National Mortgage Association. This is a government-sponsored private corporation designed to assist the primary mortgage market. And you just need to memorize it. But let's talk about what that is to help you understand it. First thing, you've got to remember it's a private corporation. This is not the government. It is not the government. And that's where people will get this wrong on the real estate exam. It's a private corporation, but it is government sponsored. The government works in conjunction with this private company called the Federal National Mortgage Association. What it does, here's its purpose. It buys loans from lenders. So you get these mortgage lenders out there and they're issuing loans, but they run out of money. They only have so much money. So Fannie Mae steps in and it assists the primary mortgage market by buying loans from all these lenders all over the country. And that frees up all those lenders' liquidity so that they can turn around and issue more loans. And that's what Fannie Mae is. So screenshot that one. You want to memorize that. Now let's talk about a buffer zone. Let's go a whole different direction. Let's talk about zoning and planning. This is a good one. Um, all of these I'm handpicking because I have heard and noticed that all of these have come from test questions. So that's why we're not just randomly learning 10,000 vocabulary words. We're learning ones that will help you pass the exam. We'll talk about a buffer zone. When it comes to zoning and planning, a buffer zone separates two incompatible areas. For example, the area in between a commercial area and a residential area might be filled with apartments in that buffer zone. Another example would be a, a government-regulated trash dump has vacant land next to it, ready for development between an existing neighborhood and the trash dump. The zoning will not allow more single-family homes to be built in that buffer zone, but it will allow public storage units to be built in that buffer zone instead. So that's a buffer zone. A master land plan. When it comes to zoning and planning, because we're just talking about that with the buffer zone. So now when it comes to zoning and planning, the purpose of a master land plan is to act as a guide for future growth of a city. It's to help a city implement zoning regulations based on that master land plan. And you'll see this used out in suburbs. Right now, if there's a suburb that you're familiar with and it, there's farmland all around it, I bet that city has a master land plan of future development. What could be commercial areas? What could be multifamily areas? What would be single family neighborhoods? That's all gonna be listed on a master land plan. You'll see future school locations. You'll see parks. All of that's on the master land plan. Ad valorem. This is such a key word. I want you to screenshot it. It's weird. Just memorize it. I have a test question about this on one of my other videos, specifically about ad valorem. It's a Latin phrase, and it means according to value. Just remember, according to value. It does not mean additional value. 
It does not mean add value. Those would be wrong answers on this question. It means according to value. That's a tax question and how counties issue uh, valuation on properties. So just memorize that one. We're almost done. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to talk about some types of loans. Before we do this, uh, please subscribe. The, the biggest reason to subscribe to my videos is because most of my videos are about what to do after you get your real estate license. The getting your real estate license, passing the test, and then getting your license, that's the beginning of your career. I've been doing this 25 years, and it's the most awesome career. Unlimited income potential which there's no cap. You can make as much money. You can work as hard as you want. It is truly the most awesome career. So please subscribe. Give this video a like. Before this runs out, make sure you go into the description below and click on all the other videos. I've got national questions. I've got all kinds of test questions to practice with. Now, this is types of loans. Here's what we're going to do this slide and the next slide, and then we're gonna be done with this video to keep it as short as possible. And I want to explain three types of loans. I think you should screenshot this one. Um, number two, a straight note. I'll just tell you that's a good test question coming out of that one. I have a test question example in one of my other videos, but let's talk about this so you can memorize these three, these three things and understand the differences between types of loans. Number one is a fully amortized note. This is a normal loan. At the end of the loan, which could be a 15-year loan or typically a 30-year loan, all of the principal and all of the interest are fully paid. It has a constant mortgage payment plan. So almost everybody who's getting a loan is doing number one. That's what we think of a normal, normal loan. But number two is a straight note. And these are out there all the time. For uh, It's a term loan. It's an interest-only loan. It's a short term. And it's used as a construction loan, typically. That's the example I want you to remember. When you hear of a construction loan, it's a straight note. And it lasts maybe a year one year ending with a balloon payment to pay the loan in full. So some things to remember with a straight note. It's interest only. You're not going to pay any principal at all on that loan. It's short term. It's used for construction loans. It typically lasts maybe one year and it ends with a balloon payment. And of course that balloon payment is all that principal at the end of that short-term loan. That's a straight note. And that's where you might very possibly see a test question. Number three is a partially amortized note. So this one has principal and interest. And it also ends with a balloon payment. So now, let's talk about a balloon loan because we just covered it. But let's, let's help you memorize this. What is a balloon loan? A balloon loan is a mortgage that does not fully amortize over the term. So if you want, go back and look at the slide before. Number two and number three both have a balloon payment at the end. Remember, number one is your just typical, no, more normal loan. A, number one is a fully amortized note. But number two and number three end in a balloon loan. So again, look at that. What is a balloon loan? A balloon loan is a mortgage that does not fully amortize over the term. Got it? It's just that simple. But it's important that you memorize this. This is not just random, <laughs> random vocabulary words. I want to make sure you know what the balloon loan is. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Happy studying and a go past that real estate exam.